Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches Middle School Math Survival Guide. I'm Fred Woods, ready to teach. Hi fellow mathematicians, welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches 6th grade mathematics pre-assessment and this is going to be video one of three. Before we get into it, let's talk about what is a mathematics pre-assessment. A pre-assessment is a test that's designed to help educators, teachers, understand where each student is on their math learning roadmap. Why is this given? It's given because when students start a new grade level, teachers have data from previous school year that tells them where each student finished. Over the summer break, students, they lose some knowledge. Therefore, educators or teachers use a mathematics pre-assessment to learn about and understand where each student is on their math learning pathway. They use that information to help customize math education. That means is that if there are some students that need some help to bring them up to where the majority of the students are, I'm going to design something to help them get up there, thus these videos. Or if there's other students that are excelling, I'm like, gosh, I need to make other plans for them because they need to be challenged more. Basic number sense covers areas of mathematics where you're able to just do some addition, some subtraction, maybe identify different types of numbers. It's something that you're going to be learning between first and let's say fourth or fifth grade because fifth grade, you're, fourth and fifth grade, you're starting to apply it a little in different areas. But this is where you're going to be doing your subtraction, your multiplication, and your division. Let's get to it. So here we have number one. What is the sum of 26.15, 5.9, and 78.16? I'm going to show the non-example first. This is, I'm just going to say non-example. This is non. This is not what you're supposed to do. What I've seen in the past is where people do this. They do 26.15. And then 5.9, they just throw it right down here. 5.9 and 78.16. So they have 6, 1, 8, and 7. See how it's just kind of like sloppy and it's like they add all this up. and They're going, there's 14, there's 20. And it's like, well, wait a minute. There's a problem because we're not adding up like numbers. And when I say like numbers, it's, we have to think about the place values for all of this is this five right here equal to this tenth no it's a it's a it's a whole number it's five in the one it should be in the ones column this is where the ones column is now let's do this correctly let's take a look at this 26.15 5.9 78.16 so i have 26.15 5.9 so i have that decimal point here so five and then nine and i'm going to go ahead and add a zero just just for clarity so i have those columns in, in the right place and then 78.16 so I'm going to have my decimal, 1, 6, 8, and 7. If you notice, my hundredths are lined up, my tenths are lined up, my ones are lined up, and my tens are lined up. What that does, it makes it easier for when we're adding things up. So 5 plus 0 is 5, plus 6 is going to be 11, but that's actually 11 hundredths, but I'm just making it easier so we can follow this along. So I have 2, that's going to be 11, 12. So again, there's 2 tenths and 1, 1. So 6 and 1, there's 7, 5, there's 12, 20. Put that up here. And that is 20. It's 0 1s and 2 tens. 2 tens plus 2 tens is 4 tens plus 7 tens is 11 tens. So I have 110.21. There it is. That's the only way you can work it out. Make sure you're looking at the columns and the place values for all of these numbers here. Number two, which number is not like the others? Well, let's look at these numbers. We have a negative 6, 12, 0, 0 0.46, and negative 99. What this means is that we have to look at these, evaluate these numbers and what they are. Are these natural numbers? Well, 12 is. Are they whole numbers? Well, 0 and 12 are. Are they integers? Okay, well, negative 6 is an integer, 12 is an integer, 0 is an integer. That's not an integer, and negative 99 is an integer, so it must be 0 0.46. That academic knowledge, or rather academic vocabulary, that I need to understand helped me out with this. What do you know? I'm sitting here, I was talking about academic language or vocabulary, and that's where we're at right now. This is where your new teacher is going to test you or pre-assess you about certain academic language. So let's take a look. Which equation has a product as the answer? Equation, you should know that these are equations, has a product, and that's what we're trying to find out. What is a product? Well, let's look at this. 112 plus 32 is equal to 144. Add in, add in, 
equals the sum. This is a sum. 112 divided by 32 is equal to 3.5. This is going to be my dividend, dividend, my divisor, dv, and this is my quotient, just q. So that's not it. I have a factor here. There's an f for that. Factor is equal to the product. So my knowledge of how all this works out about this academic language of what is a product comes into play. And to figure this all out, so I have my menu in, my subtrahend, and then this is the difference right here. Which part of the division equation is the quotient? We kind of went over that over here, but let's take a look at it. Let's, this is the dividend. This is the symbol. This is the divisor. And this right here is the quotient. But is this part of it, of the quotient? Well, let's say answers. Well, we know it's not this one. That's the remainder, so it's not the quotient. This is the divisor. So this right here is the quotient. Now, let's go up here. Now, what happens if I went out and I kept on working it out for, and I have a decimal, then that's going to be the quotient. But the remainder is part of the answer, but it is not the quotient. So number five, classify the number three. Classify. Hmm, what does that mean? I'm looking at that number three. Oh, boy. Again, a lot of numbers that I need to understand. So three, if we look at that, we're going, well, wait a minute. What is three? Well, I know it's a natural number. I know it's a whole number. I know that it is an integer and it is rational. So all of these others are correct, but this is the most correct answer here because it has all the check marks there. It is an integer, it's whole, it's rational, and it is rational here. But this is the best answer. Six, select the group of numbers that are integers. Now you have to remember what an integer is. Imagine the whole number. So you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then when you go to the other side, to the negative side, it's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. So it's like all the whole numbers that are negative. Is this a whole number? Right here, that's not, no, can't be this because none of those are whole numbers. This looks promising here, but wait, there's a decimal. So nope, can't do that. Again, decimal. And then I have negative 3, negative 2, 0, 1, 2, 3. So there we go. These are my integers. You're going to have to understand that we're working with very specific vocabulary or academic language for mathematics. We started out with basic number sense. And now we're getting into something that's, I want to say it's more advanced, but it's still part of your basic understanding of adding, subtracting, working with different types of numbers and such. And let's take a look here. So number 7, order 5 sevenths or 5 to divided by 7, 61% and 0 0.63 from greatest to least. How do you do this? This right here is like, it's not a decimal. This is almost a decimal because we can do that quickly. And this is a decimal. What I would do would be to convert everything to decimals. So how do we do that? Well, 61%, we just divide that by 100. When you multiply this number times 100, you get 61. So therefore, it's going to be 0 0.61. So we're going from greatest to least, and I know 0 0.63 is greater than 0 0.61. So 0 0.63, okay, and then it's going to be 0 0.61 because that's smaller. Now does this 5 sevenths go over here or at the least end? Well, it's going to be 5 divided by 7. And we can't do that. That's a 0. I'm going to add a 0 here, so 50. And I know... There's that decimal point there. So 7 times 7 is 49. And when I just subtract it, it's going to give me 1. It's going to be 0 0.7. I don't need to do anything more because I know whatever this next number is going to be, which will probably be 1, this is greater than, so it's going to be 0 0.7173. And this right here is equal to that. So it's going to be 5 sevenths. Okay, so 5 sevenths. So these come off. Next one is... 0 0.63, 0 0.63, oh, so this is my answer right here. Number eight, convert three-fifths into a decimal. Well, if you remember, you have, I'm just going to put one, 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 so I have tens, ones, tenths, and then hundreds. Well, three-fifths, I know that a tenth is 0 0.1 is a ten, that is also equal to one over ten. That's one tenth. So I'm trying to get things into tenths, and I know that three fifths 
and I can create an equivalent fraction is equal to, and I want to make that into a tenth, what do I do? Well, what I can do is I can multiply, so 2 times 5, so 2 times 5 is equal to 10. Now, whatever I do at the bottom, I have to do it at the top as well, because that's like multiplying by 1. So 2 twos is equal to 1. So 2 times 3 is equal to 6. So there's 6 tenths, and that is equal to 0 0.5. Six. That's what I'm looking for. So six tenths. This is this is correct. Six tenths, but it needs to be a decimal. It's definitely not that. Definitely not that. This is my answer. Number nine. Find an equivalent expression using the associative property. Equivalent expression using the associative property. Now, what is the associative property? It's the associative property of addition. So I'm going to have a plus b plus c. You have my parentheses around the b plus c is equal to parentheses a plus b plus c. I just have to find that pattern. This is my a, this is b, and this is c. I just have to find the pattern. So a plus b, let's see here, where's my parentheses here? So 7 plus 8 plus 9. There we go. This is going to be my equivalent according to the associative property. Is that right there is this. And this one here is that. Number 10, express the ratio as a fraction in simplest form. So here we have 27 ounces to 9 cups. I'm going to take out the ounces to, and cups, so I can say that's 27 to 9. Now, I have to do it in the simplest form, and I know that both are divisible by 9, so if I divide each side by 9, I'm going to get 27 divided by 9 is equal to 3, 2, 1. Because 9 over 9 is equal to 1. Here's my answer, but wait, is there something wrong with this? It says here, as a fraction, this is the only answer that matches this because a fraction would be 3 over 1, and I do not have any of those options, so I have to just cross all those out and go with this. So you have to be smart about what you're doing. Now, it may say a fraction, if you put it, look at this way, if you put in E and did 3 over 1, like that, I would accept that, but if you can see here, 3, 2, 1 is 3, 2, 1 right here as well. Choose that answer and just go, keep on going. Please visit Mr. Woods Teaches if you need some practice for basic counting, for number sense, for academic language to help you do better in middle school because without having some math fluency going into middle school for up to fifth grade level, you're going to have some difficulties at sixth, seventh, eighth, and going on into high school. So practice, practice, practice. Thank you for watching Mr. Woods Teaches. I really appreciate you. And please remember to like, share, and subscribe. But also, hey, check out my mistakes on TikTok. So if I make a mistake and I post the video, I'm going to go out and redo that. Or if I make it while I'm creating a video, I'm going to show you, hey, wait a minute, I made a mistake. I didn't put this online in YouTube or whatever, but here it is on TikTok. So you can see how I make mistakes in my, in my explanation of how I noticed it and how I fixed it. Have a great day.